names, locations, and events changed to protect the families of those involved with this tragedy. Cast. Liza and Brain, LGBT couple, and BFFS. Gray, my jock, hulky, and nerdy guy friend, who later become my number one. Karen, evil incarnated slash possible antichrist. Kira, yours truly. Story. I was a fresh man and I made many friends along with some enemies for not being Christian or churchy like most in the school was. I was outspoken with my opinions and wasn't afraid to thrash any bullies, asshats, that tried to start trouble. Let me tell you it wasn't easy earning respect from the teachers and students as both a young woman, openly pansexual, deaf. A person not limited in sexual choice with regard to biological sex, gender, or gender identity, and a non-Christian person. But I managed it just fine if I do say so myself even if it had its difficulties. I had something of a following. Bullying in the school dropped, which there was a lot of seeing as the faculty and staff could care less most times, and even the school's grade point average increased for my year. Mostly because I made sure my friends studied and we had a free period to get studying done. I even taught math and English to some who didn't get the material and as I said the staff didn't care to tutor them. But I did and I somehow become the voice for many who were different compared to the pure and Christian peers. This voice I became was one of the beginnings that sparked Karen's wraith and her ruin. Liza and Brain it still pains me to think of them to this day. They were they were kindest and most thoughtful people I ever met and they treated everyone equally with this gentleness that only comes from a loving family. They wouldn't hurt a soul and they were the inspiration of many hopeful singles in our school because just looking at them you knew these two would grow old together as if one died then the other. Would be only hours behind, but what they were spat in the very face of Karen's beliefs though she didn't know it at the time. Bloody hell I don't think anyone knew until they took their first PE class together. You see our PE group girls and guys together in the same class and we were forced to buy horrible ugly P.E uniforms that cost an arm and well your soul, a rip off to make more money for the school. That was when we went to change for the class on the first day. Brain came into the girls dressing room and surprise, Surprise Brain was a girl not a handsome guy that most girls were crushing on because he she was not only forbidden. But the type of guy most girls dreamed of marrying as kids. A prince type really. Oh and she preferred to be referred to as a guy so that's what Brain will be called from now on. To say they were shocked that the gentle prince was a girl was an understatement and it made visibly Brain and Liza uncomfortable with their stares. What the hell are you all staring at? I demanded angrily at the others that were staring like vultures about to devour prey with all disgusting rotten personalities to match. Oh, my god. You're a girl. It was Karen's high-pitched voice. She had a bob and looked like she belonged with the cheerleaders, but their outfits were too. Skippy as she put it once for her and would possible give her future, possible, husband impure thoughts about her. Oh honey did he? Just not about you. You see she was dating Gray at the time, but he was miserable to say the least. However, he didn't want to disappoint his family by breaking it off with her. So he grinned and bared it for as long as he could. Yes so. Brain replied. Yes so. Brain replied. That's disgusting. You're going to go to hell for being so impure and you're probably possessed by demons. She said with a sneer like some bore out of a cartoon. Oh did I say she had a crush on Brain too? No. Well, this was what set her off at this point. She just couldn't believe she wanted a girl and not a man as her boyfriend. It freaked her out and I bet she was questioning her own sexuality or was in complete denial. You did not just say that. I said hardly comprehending her stupidity. 
it wasn't registering with my much higher intelligence. What are you from the 18th century or just stupid? What did you just call me, hussy, she demanded. You heard me, or did screwing the couch make you go brain dead suddenly? I said. Yes, I knew she was cheating on Gray, but what she didn't know was that he was into me. The couch was a young man in his twenties. Not the most handsome guy, but he often hit the gym to work on one of his few assets. Unfortunately, everyone knew except Gray. He wasn't very sad about it when he found out just disappointed. How did what are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I said and turned to my friends, who were dressed in lightning speed and embarrassed about what Karen had said. Come on, guys we don't want to late for roll call. This was the day it started. This was the day I should have done more. This is the day I should have thrown Karen off a rooftop or better yet a clip before she did the unthinkable before she murdered my friends. Six months later. I was having dinner with the family. Enjoy my Sunday really when I received a text from Gray. Him and Karen were still together at the time, which was irritating for the both of us seeing as we were into each other like crazy with the teenage hormones to make it even worse. He wanted to know where I was so I texted back that I was having dinner with my family at a restaurant. What he texted back surprised me. He wanted to know if he could see me in private and that he was only 10 minutes from there. Apparently he check on my house first before texting me. I, of course, agreed. When he arrived I excused myself from the table and went to meet him outside. I entered his car and noticed his eyes were red and puffy from likely bawling his eyes out. Gray, what the hell happened to you? I asked. Did you watch Titanic again? He is still the only man I've met that cries watching chick flicks it's kind of adorable. No, he said somberly. We really need to talk. It's important. I should not have closed that car door. He brought me to a lake and the two of us talked and he told me the most disturbing news of my life. The there was an, the there was an accident last. Liza and Brian didn't make it he was crying at this point and I had a look of utter disbelief on my face. The four of us had met up that Friday after school and went to the movies and had dinner the night before the accident. I couldn't believe what Gray just said. My brain couldn't process it. I didn't cry. I think it was the shock prevented that as I hugged Gray to comfort him almost absent-mindedly. How did they die? I whispered. It it was a car accident they hit a tree and were killed on impact, he informed me between sobs. I didn't know what to say nor remember if I had said anything. I just remembered holding my sobbing Gray and trying to make sense of what happened. Why did it have to be them of all people? It didn't make sense until that Monday morning. I went to school like usual. Went to my locker and opened it to get my books out for my first class, but a letter fell out of it. I recognized Liza's handwriting the moment I saw it. I picked it up and read it. I recognized her handwriting for hers was cute, large, and I'd imagine rather hard to forge. It was several pages long of her confession of making a suicide pact with Brian. Apparently they had been harassed outside of school every day for four straight months. Rocks throw through windows, non-stop calls of threats and people telling them they all were going to go to hell or worse, hate letters, their homes spray painted and broken into. Destroyed property, and even Liza's younger brother being bullied at school because his elder sister was a lesbian. She felt as if the suffering and stress on her family was all her fault. That she had done this to her family just because she loved Brain with all her heart to the point she couldn't live without him. Brain wasn't much better and probably felt the same. 
they didn't want to break up and held on as long as they could before it was too much. The porn they star? didn't want to you bring Gray and myself Tom. into this so they kept quiet about it. I wish they didn't. I wish they would have relied on me just once. Maybe then I could have saved them, I could have helped them, and maybe they wouldn't have died, but I hated myself for not noticing the pain my friends were in. I was taken aback like by all I just learned. How have I not have noticed? I never hung out at either their house since this started and they haven't said a word of it to me one of two of their closest friends. I had Gray take me out of school no, before right class began. He took me to his place and the two of yous just kept quiet the entire day and just kept rereading the letter and I remember one thing was clear throughout the entire letter. Someone had put people up to this. Someone had instigated this entire tragic outcome and in my grief I wanted revenge. I didn't see this as a suicide or an accident. In my eyes this was murder. Someone had stolen something good and pure from this world. Someone was going to pay for it. The next day I called a few of the favors I was owed to find the killer. Then I put in another call to have a few guys clean up the trash out of both homes and remove and replace any destruction on the properties that was destroyed by their killer's comrades. I never told the families I did any of this. But I vaguely remember their parents' tears as random strangers came to their houses and helped them clean up for the funerals and then construction workers fixing the damage without pay and I didn't want to involve them in the revenge I was going to take. They all had suffered enough. Hey bro, what you doing? How you doing? I was told who was responsible for their deaths just as the funeral ended by several students who all said the same thing. They were buried together pre their requests in letters to their mothers. Karen was the one who caused all of this sadness. She had been bragging to her little followers that it was her that had a few her church fanatics call their homes and her brothers that had destroyed the property. Her admission would be her second worst mistakes. Her first was messing with my friends in the first place. I worked for over two straight years until our senior year. The dark side I mentioned before were the people I worked for one and my only goal for my services was revenge. When it was time I called in ever underhanded favor I acquired over the years and maybe had a bit of blackmail going on around the school to keep things quiet. Once things were in place I acted. Her brothers were robbed and sent to the hospital, her and friends were bullied by the most popular people in my school, which encouraged others to do the same and even teachers didn't interfere. I even got a hold of her nude pictures she sent to her precious coach. Well little miss holier than thou was your average slut in a nun disguise and they spread like wildfire at my pleasure. Then I had her bullied over social media by real and fake accounts. Trolls took care of the rest. I did everything to her. From cruel to downright petty, but I wasn't done. She was going to get a scholarship let's say Brown to keep it simple. I wasn't about to let her escape from my web nor was she going to have it easy at her new college. So I intended on ruining her life. She looked like crap months before school ended. It was a pleasure for me to see that, but it wasn't good enough. As I said I intended to ruin her life. I planted paraphernalia and an assortment of drugs in her locker and had a recording of her and the coach Kinoodling in private sent discreetly to vice principal and to her pastier. Dogs were called and what do you know, but drugs were found in her locker. I made sure she was expelled the last few months of the senior year and she couldn't graduate. A few days before the expulsion I remembered her crying behind the school where delinquents would hang out or those looking to skip class would chill alone. I asked her what was wrong and she replied, everything, she said sobbing. What did I do to deserve this? I didn't want her know what I had done nor did I feel sorry for her because I was too angry to care. 
but I kept an understanding expression on my face as I reviled her despair if anything I am sadistic when I'm crossed. I asked her to tell me what happened and she told me that for the past two years that she had be harassed and her family too. She told me she was being bullied and everyone hated her. I was happy, very happy, but I said nothing of it. I just played the part of a concerned passerby that just happened to see her crying. Though I nearly lost my composure when she complained about the word slut and murderer being spray painted on her car. I recall our last exchange, but I wasn't listening to most of her babbles. She asked me, why are you being so nice to me? We hate each other. It took everything I had not to laugh. She had no idea it was me that had caused her troubles and her suffering. I wanted to tell her to her face that it was me. That I was the one who ruined her precious image, that it was I who enjoyed watching her suffer, but I didn't. I gave her a warm smile patted her back that made me sick to do so and said, because I'm a simply an amazing person. The result was the ruining of her little life. She no longer had friends, her parents hated and disowned her as their image in the church was beyond repair, everyone hated her, and her social status went to plumage into oblivion. Karen couldn't go to the dream school she wanted to go to, she didn't get the dream boyfriend she was plotting for as it turned out, because I snagged him as soon as he was free. Or be truly happy ever because I ruined any and all chances. The last I heard she was strung out on drugs and tried to kill herself on several occasions. I don't know whether or not she succeeded or not, but several years ago she disappeared. My guess is that she did and her body is somewhere in the woods or somewhere yet to be found. Point to this story is that you should be a bit more careful who you decided to pick on and who you harass. You never know if they will have a friend like me, who doesn't care what happens to you as long as the ones they do care about get justice in the end. One thing I do hope for is that Liza and Brian can now rest peacefully now that the one responsibly was dealt with. Though knowing them they wouldn't approve of my actions, but world is lesser without them and better without Karen. Liza, brain wherever you two are I hope you are at peace. You both deserve nothing less than the best happiness. I just wish I was there for you when you needed me most. It is my one and only regret. Please, know I kept my promise to you both. I'm happy and have grey and in a way the two of you are to thank for making me the person I am now. You have no idea how grateful I am to have met you both if only for a short time. Thank you. TLDR. Harass my friends into suicide, you lose friend, money, a future, boyfriend, your precious coach lover, and the one that ruined you life stole your boyfriend while she was at it. Happy endings for everyone except Karen.